Hello, everyone. Welcome to Deception of the World. During the New Year, it is a traditional Chinese custom for families to gather together for a reunion dinner, and natural wine is also essential. A bottle of Maotai wine on the table would be a great addition. As you surely know, in mainland China today, everyone is divided into various classes by the Communist Party, even for Maotai. It will also depend on what kind of classes, from 2,000 to hundreds of thousands, or even millions of Chinese yuan, just for one bottle of Maotai wine. It can measure the levels of the status and privilege of the people who enjoy it. Before our program starts, we still kindly ask all the new viewers to support us. Please subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click on the little bell that reminds you of the updates of our shows. Thank you. Well, back to our topic. When it comes to the passion for Maotai, the senior levels of Zhou Nanhai, and the numbers of Communist Party officials, especially the Communist generals, whose obsession with Maotai wine is rarely seen in Chinese and foreign officialdom, thus Maotai wine and the corruption of the CCP army are inevitably tightly linked together. For example, the authority found 1,300 pieces of Maotai total value of 15.6 million yuan. From the luxurious residence of General Gu Junshan, the former deputy director of the General Logistics Department of the CCP, it said that the amount of Maotai wine collected by Gu Junshan alone accounted for seven thousand of the total amount owned by the Communist Army, and two thousand of the annual sales of the Maotai distillery were taken by this one person, which can be described as shocking. Of course. A deputy director to buy ten cases of Maotai wine with his salary, he will not afford to feed himself. Needless to say, the large amount of Maotai wine was treated by the officials who greased his hand for promotion. In addition, some people on the internet have collected Maotai quotes from communist generals. Among the communist generals who praise Maotai wine, such as Liang Guanglie, Li Jinai, Liao Xilong, and Liu Yuan, the first three of whom were Jiang faction officials. The most prominent feature that the nation knows about them is their corruption. Liao Xilong's quote says, "Maintain the quality of Maotai wine. It's the image of the national wine, and the status cannot be changed." Quote from Liu Yuan says, "Maotai wine is a symbol. The wine contains a lot of emotions, experiences, and extraordinary history. I'm sure these communist generals have no shortage of Maotai wine at home, but you can also question how much they bought out of their own pockets." If Maotai wine is linked to status, position, and corruption under the ruling of the CCP, it more or less tarnished the reputation of this good wine. Then, after listening to a long rumor folk tale called "throwing a bottle of wine in anger to raise the country's prestige," it might give some relief to Maotai lovers. The story goes on that in 1915, Panama World's Fair. The Chinese representative pretended to accidentally lose hold of a bottle of Maotai wine, fell to the ground, and broke. The crowd was surprised, then amazed. Why? The aroma of the wine was overwhelming, and the judge's nose were instantly subdued. So a gold medal was awarded to Maotai wine. The story is a little short, and forgive me for not giving more details. Say this little story, mainly leading to the bigger story. The history of Maotai wine has gone from small fame in its origin to become famous in the world in just over 100 years. Legendary as it is, it is still just a glass of wine. However, the big changes in China over these 100 years, especially after the Communist Party stole the power, makes its drink, which originally brought joy to the lives of the nation, have brewed tragedies of blood and tears. When we are fortunate enough to drink Maotai and praise it as a good wine in front of our family and friends, we may not be aware of its past and present life. Let's start with the origin of the contemporary Maotai wine. Today's Guizhou Maotai Group website calls itself the pillar of the nation. Technically speaking, this is true in terms of its volume, market value, and the GDP it produces for the CCP. However, according to the company's history. It is only 70 years old. In fact, it must go back almost 100 years to the origin of where this wine first came from. This is supposed to be a matter of ancestral recognition, but it has been placed on the company's website in the inconspicuous wine culture section. But even it's been marginalized. The company's party office still takes it as a highlight. It says that Maotai can be traced back to the Han Dynasty, 
and even come up with its origins only based on a half unverified sentence in the book Historical Records Biography of the Ethnic Minority Group in Southwest China. It's not taken as a reliable source by this show. At most, let's start with the sentence. In 1704, named after Mao Tai, Mao Chun, Mao Tai Shao Chun, Hui Sha Mao Tai, and other wines are the predecessor of Mao Tai wine. Well, this makes some sense. According to it, in 1804, numbers of Mao Tai distillery were built all around the town. Mao Tai wines were stored in almost every house, which painted a vivid picture of the Mao Tai brewing industry appearing in prosperous situation at that time. Mao Tai wine has won the wine champion in Guizhou province, and Mao Tai Shaochun was praised as the most fragrant wine. According to our research, Hua Lianhui, a Qing Dynasty scholar during Emperor Guangxu period, was the chief administrator of salt business in Luzhou, Sichuan in 1857. He spent five years rebuilding a brewery on the ruins of the town of Mao Tai in order to satisfy his mother's wish to drink Mao Tai flavor wine when she was young. This brewery was one of the predecessors of contemporary Mao Tai wine, the Chengyu Brewery. At first, it produced 1,750 kilograms of Mao Tai wine per year and was named Hui Sha Mao Wine. Sha means red sorghum for brewing, and Hui Sha is the most famous Mao Tai brewing process, where the sorghum is steamed several times to produce wine rather than being squeezed out of the wine at once. At that time, Mao Tai was only the name of the place, not the name of the wine. And Hui Sha Mao wine was also commonly known as Hua Mao, therefore, Qi Hua was also known as a filial son of the generation. In 1879, a wealthy man named Shi Rongxiao in Runhuai County, Guizhou, joined with Sun Quantai and the owner of Wang Tianhe salt shop Wang Li Fu, established a brewery called Rong Tai He Brewery, with one letter from each of their names, and began brewing Rong He wine. At this point, the two breweries, Cheng Yi Brewery and Rong He Brewery, in the town of Mao Tai, have formed a situation that was competing and promoting with each other but the brew wine did not have a unified name. In early 1914, the US Congress decided to celebrate the completion of the Panama Canal by holding an international exposition. A special envoy was sent to China to invite Chinese officials and merchants to attend the fair. The former president of the Republic of China, Yuan Shikai, ordered the Ministry of Industry and Commerce to organize the event. Mao Tai Wine was included in the list of products requested by the Ministry of Agriculture and Commerce due to its record of winning prizes at the Nanyang Persuasion Fair. Two sample wines from the town of Mao Tai, Ronghe and Cheng Yi workshops, were selected and sent to the exhibition under the name of Mao Tai Brewery Company, collectively called Mao Tai Wine. This is probably the first official name. On February 20, 1915, the Panama World's Fair opened in San Francisco. It was the largest international exposition in the world at the beginning of the 20th century, with more than 200,000 exhibitors. Mao Tai Wine won the gold medal at the fair, that's why the legendary tale was told earlier. After the award, Cheng Yi and Rong He fought for the owner of the medal, and finally, the Guizhou provincial government issued a ruling in a compromising way. The gold medal certificate and medal were kept by the Runhuai County Chamber of Commerce, and the two workshops, Cheng Yi and Ronghe, were allowed to put the Panama International Exposition gold medal winner logo on their product trademarks. Thus, the town of Mao Tai in Runhuai County produced two major international brands of wine, Ronghe and Cheng Yi, but it was still not collectively known as Mao Tai. Since the taste of Ronghe wine was superior to that of Cheng Yi wine, in all aspects, it won the flavor of consumers can quickly occupy the market. Many well-known figures from the Communist Party and the Kuomintang were proud to have a sip of Ronghe wine. It is said that when the Communists were fleeing northward and while they passed through the Mao Tai town, senior Communist generals such as Zhou Enlai drank Ronghe wine and were full of praise. It is also said that Ronghe wine was used by the wounded Communists to heal their wounds. At that time, the price of Ronghe wine was two silver dollars a bottle, while Cheng Yi wine was two bottles for one silver dollar. In 1929, the Hengchang Brewery was founded in the town of Mao Tai. Ever since from then on, three breweries competed for development in the town of Mao Tai. In 1949, everything was changed. In 1950, a 40-year-old deputy battalion commander of the Communist Army, Zhang Xinzhong, came to the town of Mao Tai with 12 soldiers to take over the local brewery and to set up a new distillery. That is it for the part one of Mao Tai wine. 
If you are interested, please don't forget to subscribe to us and continue with our story in the next episode of Mountain Wine Part 2.